We are going to discuss the various key advantages to in vivo optical imaging. Top of the list is the fact that optical imaging is incredibly sensitive. Uh, there are devices out there, and I include the ones from SI Imaging, that have very, very high sensitivities. Ours, in fact, are really at the cutting edge of the uh, sensitivities that are available on the market, getting down to 45 photons per second per centimeter squared per steradian. And this can translate to very low copy number of luciferase enzymes and uh, floor force that need to be injected in order to get detection. Now, there are other very um, highly resolving modalities of imaging out there. Micro CT and MRI are among them. And these are very good at resolving cellular level structures. However, when one initiates a model system in which you've injected cells, it may take weeks to get to the point where you're looking at cellular level structures that are of a size that can be resolved by either micro CT or MRI. So with high sensitivity comes early onset detection. And let me just present an example experiment to demonstrate this point. What you can see off to the left here is again, our athymic uh, nude mice uh, that have been challenged with the A549 cells shown previously. And again, they're lodged in the capillary bed of the pulmonary space. And following uh, luciferin injection, you can very nicely see the light emitted uh, courtesy of luciferase activity. Now, this happened as early as two hours post-injection. And these mice were followed out, out to nine weeks. And the signal, of course, just continues to get brighter. Now, if you look retrospectively at MRI and micro CT, you can certainly see the nice peripulmonary uh, lesions of tumor mass development along the edge of the uh, lung lobe here at nine weeks, both in the MRI and in the micro CT. And if you work your way backwards, uh, you can see it at seven weeks and at six weeks, not quite so clearly, but it's definitely there. And by four weeks, it's really quite hard to discern. So what we're looking at with regard to onset of detection for MRI and micro CT is somewhere north of four weeks, somewhere longer than four weeks. By comparison, optical was detecting uh, this tumor cell population as early as two hours post-injection. So how do you make use of this early onset detection? Well, it's obviously very useful for screening, right? You can screen your uh, mice that have been injected and you can determine which mice have been effectively challenged and which have not. And so as a uh, basic rule of thumb for a lot of um, animal model system developments, it's always very nice to have an optical component that would allow you to screen your mice um, early on so that you know that you have what you need. Now, beyond uh, being highly sensitive and serving as a screening modality, optical is great in the sense that it is fast. The real-time data acquisition for optical data takes something on the order of seconds, somewhere typically between five and 20, 25 seconds. By comparison, when you're doing PET spec um, imaging, you're looking at at least minutes, if not the better part of a uh, half hour. And the uh, MRI acquisitions can be the better part of an hour. So optical is fast. And beyond being fast, it has large FOV. This makes it um, truly a high throughput imaging modality. It is fast and with a large FOV, allowing you to image as many as five to 10 mice at a time, you're able to create basically a data set of high end rather easily, leading to strong statistical data and in effect, better science. Now, there are a couple last key advantages to optical imaging that I'd like to go over. The first being non-invasive imaging. What do I mean by that? When you're acquiring your data, you don't need to sacrifice the animal at intermediate time points. You essentially can follow the same cohort of animals over time by non-invasively imaging the optical data that is penetrating through their tissue and being collected by your camera system. 
So what does this do? Well, obviously, first of all, it leads to the use of fewer animals, which is always a good thing. But secondarily, it also allows for a single cohort of animals to be followed over time. And as a result, you don't have intergroup variability that would have happened in more traditional constructs where you were sacrificing uh, replicate groups of animals at various intermediate time points to collect data. By using a single quarter of animals, all of this intergroup variability is gone. And you have statistical, statistically tighter data, which makes for better science. Now, finally, there is the fact that with the large field of view of optical imaging, you're able to do whole animal imaging. What does this give you? Well, it gives you the capacity to comprehensively monitor disease progression and the system systemic distribution of uh, therapeutics throughout the animal system. That exhaustive capability of optical imaging is very valuable when you're wanting to look at the true um, distribution of any pathogen and the real biodistribution uh, measured optically, the PKPD, of the therapeutic that you're trying to evaluate. What we have here off to the left is an example study where the investigators did their due diligence in looking at the biodistribution of uh, FLI probe, both in vivo and importantly, ex vivo at the end of study at necropsy. And let me explain the value of that. So first of all, um, the science here is a little bit cool in that we're looking at a colorectal cancer ectopically placed here subcutaneously. And the probe that was used the fluorescent probe that uh, was used was a conjugate probe in which it was directed by a aphid body specific for the colorectal cancer um, uh, cell surface and uh, an IR700 fluorescent dye that did double duty both as a fluorophore and as a therapeutic, specifically a photosynthesizer molecule that would uh, instigate photodynamic therapy of the colorectal cancer which is essentially the production of radical oxygen intermediates that could kill uh, uh, the functionality of the cell uh, if in close proximity. Now, science uh, and application aside, what these investigators did is they demonstrated in the in vivo construct that there was apparently high specificity of the probe conjugate for the colorectal cancer. They went one step further and did necropsy at the end of study this was an early pilot study, and they showed that indeed, amongst all the major organs harvested, the probe conjugate specifically and with uh, much higher concentration bound to the, uh, uh, the colorectal cancer tumor of interest, um, and much less so to all the other organs uh, tested, with the exception, of course, being the liver. And I say, of course, in that uh, any large form protein will get screened and captured by the liver in process. So the, the, the takeaway here is that it is always good to go ahead and do a necropsy evaluation of major organ distribution of your probe early on in your study so that you can validate that in fact, the apparent biodistribution that you see in vivo is uh, in effect, um, the real by distribution that you would get by the uh, very sensitive uh, necropsy ex vivo analysis of the major organs.